We want to thank Google for supporting PBS Digital Studios. During our first field trip to Bozeman, Montana, we met with paleohistology lab manager Dr. Ellen Therese Lamb, who showed us the fascinating world inside of fossilized bones. But we also visited Amy Atwater, who is a collections manager, like me. She's in charge of the vertebrate paleontology collection, located in the basement of the museum. With a backdrop of Edmontosaurus and Tyrannosaurus rex bones, she describes her job and the collection she manages. Hey everybody, it's Callie here again. I'm at the Museum of the Rockies in the Burt Paleo Collection talking to the new collections manager, Amy Atwater. Thank you so much for having us here today in this amazing collection. What is your paleontological background? Like, what's your specialty? So I most recently completed my master's degree at the University of Texas at Austin, where I focused on Eocene mammals and specifically Eocene primates. So it's something that not a lot of folks know that around 45 million years ago, actually like 56 to about 43 million years ago, we had little prosimian, lemur-like, tarsier-like primates jumping around Around, hopping around North America, the United States. We mostly focus on their teeth and they're extremely small. My biggest sample had teeth that were about two millimeters by one millimeter, wow. so in length by width. So Lots of microscope work, huh? Everything under a microscope, absolutely on everything. So this is kind of interesting. You're, you manage this massive dinosaur collection and you study teeny tiny little mammals. I always had a place for the big megafauna in my heart and it's it's been exciting to have an opportunity to protect and take care of all, all sizes of fossils here at the Museum of the Rockies. The Museum of the Rockies has among the largest collections of North American dinosaurs in the United States. It also holds the largest collection of T-Rex and Triceratops fossils in the world. Managing a large collection of massive million-year-old bones is a surprisingly delicate task. So I'm a collections manager at the University of Montana, just like three hours to the west of here, but can you describe to our audience what What is a collections manager? What, what do you do? What's your role? I do a lot of things <laughs> and try to take care of all of the fossils. I usually deal with fossils after they have been removed from the field, taken out in their field jacket, and usually after they've been prepared by our preparators. And then they make their way to me and my office, and it's my job to take the fossil, make sure we have all of the necessary information, make sure that it's labeled properly. John has often referred to collection managers is kind of like being a librarian, which I'm sure you can <laughs> relate to. Fossil with that. librarian! <laughs> exactly. And that's true. We take care of these objects and then make sure that as they're in their final long term storage, that they're still in a safe place, that they have a nice cradle to protect them, that they have some foam around them if they need that, that we have all the right information on them, and make sure that they're taken care of and also available to visiting researchers. And you mentioned the cradles, and we have some lovely cradles behind us here. Can, um, can you elaborate a little bit of what the purpose of one of these cradles is? Sure, of course. Fossils have been in the ground for millions of years, as you know, and when we bring them to the surface, this is not the most stable environment for them. So we want to make sure that they have everything to be as protected as possible to minimize any amount of damage that could take place. And it really just helps maintain the long-term safety of these finite resources. Right. We don't want to screw it up. We don't want <laughs> one of these things. Yeah, to... you can't just like go out and collect another one. Well, sometimes maybe, but nothing not that is of that individual, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So we we talk about that a lot. Some folks will say, just go get another T-Rex. Well, they're not all the same. And I wish I could just go find another. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yes. We'd all be out of a job if it was that easy. <laughs> right. Just go out and find me another one. Exactly. So every, yeah, every fossil that comes in is unique. It's finite. It's the only one of its specific type. It's already fragile. It is it is millions of years old. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is a lot to ask of anything. <laughs> and we want to do everything we can to make sure that we can research them for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Now you mentioned prep and prepping a fossil. What what do you do when you prep a fossil? When a fossil is discovered in the field, it is rarely in a pristine, ready to go on display state. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't find a, a perfectly articulated T-Rex standing there waiting to be found. That just isn't how geology works. So when we bring them out of the field, 
they're usually still within a lot of sediment that they were found with, and that's part of their jacket. And so the preparator's job is to get the jacket off from the field and work away all of that sediment and stabilizing the bone at the exact same time. It's just about getting them to being their their true bone instead of being still partially excavated, if you will. And then while you're doing that, you frequently will use a variety of glues and putties to get everything to stick together and uh, to hold together correctly so that it will be stable and so that it could go on exhibit someday as well. So there are a lot of amazing things in this collection that I can imagine. What is like the most special or unique or rare thing that's here at the MOR? Something that really put Museum of the Rockies on the map was eggs and dinosaurs in embryos and nestlings and this idea of some dinosaurs caring for their young. I personally think that for me, the most exciting and unique thing that I've learned about and been really excited about is a specific uh, T-Rex specimen, MOR1125, which we call B-Rex. It was found by Bob Harmon, one of our preparators, so it's called B-Rex in his honor. And uh, Dr. Mary Schweitzer has done a lot of work with this B-Rex individual and she looks at soft tissues in bone. They were able to identify what the soft tissue in the femur was and it's medullary tissue. And that is something we only see today in female birds that are preparing to lay eggs. It's a source of calcium. So because of that, by using the comparative method, we can conclusively say that B-Rex was female and she is the first T-Rex to be conclusively shown to be of one sex or the other. One of my other favorites has been this incredibly beautiful borophagine skull. And a borophagine is a, a bone crushing dog. So they have these incredible teeth that were just- They are ridiculous. Just insane. And it's the most beautiful skull and jaw I have ever ever had the joy of looking at. So this was super cool, Amy. Thank you so much for having us here today and talking about your amazing job. Is there anything you wanna end with or sign off or anything like that? I just want to encourage everybody out there to go visit the Museum of the Rockies. Heck yeah. Great, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks to Google for supporting PBS Digital Studios. They've created a mobile app, Science Journal, that lets you take notes and measure scientific phenomena such as light, sound, and motion. You can find activity ideas and additional information on their website at g.co slash science journal. I want to send a special thank you to the Museum of the Rockies for allowing us to film at their facilities. Also, I want to thank viewers like you for joining me again on our visit to the museum. We're already planning more trips to the field, but while you wait for these, let me know in the comments where you want eons to visit next. And don't forget to go to youtube.com eons and subscribe.